All right, folks. So this is going to be the the first real substan substantive video in the my series on algebraic number theory. Um, we're going to start with the first section of Milne. Um, so we're going to talk about basically the goal of this section is to give you some of the basic definitions from commutative algebra that we're going to need. Um, okay. So the, the first is the notion of. Uh, an algebra over a ring. Okay, so let A be a commutative ring. With unit and let's suppose that phi from A to B is a unital ring homomorphism we call the pair B Borphy and A algebra okay so this map Varfi essentially allows us to multiply elements of A, or multiply elements of B by elements of A. So, what do I mean by this? Um, so, example, okay, let's consider the inclusion, so maybe one of the simplest possible examples We can include z into q just um, by sending one to one. Uh, <laughs> okay. And the pair. Okay. Or the pair q. The pair Q comma iota um, is a C algebra. Okay. Um, you could also, I mean, this map doesn't have to be injective. You could also consider the projection. pi from z to z mod p, or really z mod nz for any integer n. Okay. Then z mod nz pi is another z algebra. This essentially um, this ring homomorphism Barfi allows you to multiply elements of B by elements of A uh, via their image under Barfi. Okay. Okay. So a couple of remarks I want to make. Um, so I guess the first thing I want to say is that every ring for the context of this lecture series will be commutative with unit. So every ring, unless otherwise stated, is commutative with unit. Okay. And um, I guess I should also say every ring homomorphism is unical. Okay. We also will often omit the, the map. 
So, so if um, So if B for phi is an A algebra, we often just refer to it as B, where the map bar phi um, is implicit. Okay. Okay. So some important definitions when it comes to ring algebras, algebras over rings. Um, so let A and B be rings, and A subset of B a unital subring. for beta 1 through beta m elements of B, we can define the A subalgebra of B generated by beta 1 through beta m we denote this by a adjoin beta 1 through beta m to be the smallest Subring of B containing A and beta one through beta M. Concretely, so um, this is kind of like an abstract definition of what this thing is. Concretely, it's really just. Um, polynomials in the beta sub i with coefficients in A. Okay. So Milne goes on to define um, ideals in rings, the sums of ideals. Okay, these are hopefully things that should be familiar from ring theory. Um, he defines a quotient ring, which I've already kind of talked about up here. Um, There's um, an important proposition from ring theory, which I want to remind you of. Okay, that has to do with quotient rings and ideals in quotient rings. Okay, so the proposition says, let A be a ring and math rack A an ideal in A let pi this is going to denote the canonical projection from A to A mod this ideal
and essentially this map pi is going to induce a bijection between two different sets of ideals, one in A and one in the quotient. So we're going to let S1, this is going to be the set of ideals, set of ideals in A, such that B is an ideal, containing our quotient ideal A. And as two, this is going to be the set of ideals, just the set of ideals in the quotient. Okay. B is an ideal. Okay. And it turns out that there's a bijection between these two things define pi star from s2 to s1 by pi star of an ideal is the preimage of that ideal under pi then pi star is a well-defined bijection So if you're being careful, you should check that pi inverse of an ideal is again an ideal. That's really what I mean when I say well-defined here. And the bijection property, I mean, hopefully at this point we know what bijections are. So I'm not going to prove this proposition. Um, this is really just an exercise in ring theory. Um, and uh, is more here as a reminder rather than an important result. There's something else I should say here. Furthermore, just to add on some information, furthermore, pi star induces a bijection between both maximal Maybe I, I'll be uh, more clear what I mean by this. So this map pi star, if I restrict to the maximal or prime ideals, it also remains a bijection in the following sense. So between maximal slash prime ideals of A mod A and the maximal slash prime ideals of A containing A. Okay. So this is, I think, maybe I've, I've heard this referred to as like the fourth isomorphism theorem or something like this. But it's a, a fairly meat and potatoes result from uh, a first course in ring theory. Okay, and uh, the last proposition from this section, which is important. Which is another, I think probably, I think it's even like the third isomorphism theorem or something like this. Um, another important result from ring theory. Let A be a ring. And A, subset of A an ideal. Then for B contained in the quotient an ideal and pi again this is going to denote the canonical rejection okay. 
we get an isomorphism of rings. Bar phi from A. So if I take the preimage of this ideal B in A and I quotient by A, this is the same thing as if I took my quotient and then I quotient it again. Okay, okay and the, the map, I'll even tell you what the map is. Uh, and it's kind of like the only thing you could think to write down. It's fine by V of A plus pi inverse of B equals A plus A all plus B. Okay. So this map is a bijection. It's a ring homomorphism. It's well to find things like this. Um, again, another meat and potatoes result from commutative algebra. Okay, so these are the the results I want to highlight from this first section on Milne. As we get into the more like um, as we get into things that aren't just prerequisite knowledge, um, I'll start being more more careful about proving things. But right now, this is mostly just serving as a reminder um, and kind of giving you a base of knowledge that I'm going to assume going forward for the rest of this algebraic number theory.